I'm Mikhail Piotrovsky, director of the State Hermitage Museum of the Hermitage. It's called Gasodarsky Hermitage, one of the most important and biggest museums in the world. It's a great encyclopedic museum which exists for more than 250 years. It presents different cultures and civilizations in a dialogue. It has something like uh, more than 10 buildings, some of them old palaces, some of them new buildings, very updated. It has something around 500 rooms, many, many hundred square meters of exhibition space. We are now standing near one of the biggest sculptures which exists inside the museum, the Roman sculpture of Jupiter, the main god of uh, the Romans. The sculpture is very big. It's a Roman copy of a great famous sculpture of Zephsus, same as Jupiter. It was founded in Italy, then came to one of Italian collections, and then bought for collection and put in, uh, bought for Hermitage and put into this building, which is called the New Hermitage. It's one of the buildings of our museum, which has Winter Palace, the official residence of the Tsars, and different buildings, different wings built for the museum. This building, the new Hermitage, was built by order of Nicholas I, who made Hermitage a public museum. It was, before it was a private museum of the Tsars, made it Hermitage of the public museum, mm -hmm. built these beautiful rooms in the style which is called Neo-Greek, uh, which is kind of coordinating with the objects which you have here. So this Jupiter is uh, one of the great symbols of Hermitage because it came to the new Hermitage, so it's a symbol of this public museum. And during the war, when there was a siege and uh, one third of the collection has been evacuated to Ural Mountains, this sculpture stayed here. It is big, it is heavy, and so it became also the symbol of strength and defense against the siege and the aggression and the war. It's an important symbol, which everybody who comes to Hermitage comes, and one of the rituals of Hermitage for the children is to come here and to say hello to the Jupiter, and then you can go around the museum to see. On well, the first floor, we have the Greek and Roman antiquities. And now I will take you around some of the most beautiful corners of Hermitage, just to give you a glimpse of what this museum is. And it is an invitation to come and to see more of it. So we go through the Greek and Roman rooms, and then we go to a pavilion hall, and then we'll be in the place where Hermitage was let's say, founded by Catherine the Great, because Nicholas I was very important, but the founder of the museum is Catherine the Great, the great empress of Russia. Well, here we have some very typical design of the new Hermitage, and the great vase made from one piece of stone, which was planned to be stand in the entrance of the, the new Hermitage, a building Roman portraits, Roman applied arts, And now we will pass through a beautiful hall called 20 Column Hall, which is built in a style of a Greek temple with big display of Greek vases and with pictures on the walls, which will address to some of the subjects of typical Greek vases and, and pictures on them. And we have some collection of Etrusk bronzes, and then some sculptures and pictures in tradition of Greek and Roman. Well, things pretended to remind you on Greek and Roman tradition in medieval art, in art of the new time, and even in contemporary art. And then, then we go upstairs. Now we are in the one of the most beautiful places in Hermitage, the place which is called the Pavilion Hall. This pavilion in a style which was considered in the 19th century to be something like Islamic style of Islamic Spain. But what is important for this room, it 
is the beginning of Hermitage. Hermitage means place of isolation, a place where a hermit lives. And there was a, a tradition in Europe, 18th century and 18th century, to build some Hermitages inside the big uh, gardens and in, uh, near the palaces, a place for unofficial meetings. And Catherine the Great, when she moved from her places outside of St. Petersburg into Winter Palace, has built a small garden, hanging garden here. And in the end of the hanging garden was a small pavilion called Hermitage, not this one, the previous one. And this is a place where she was organizing special meetings and special gatherings, and it was a place to which she brought the first collection. First collection had been hanged in the galleries. Uh, just on both sides. And so the name of the museum came from this, and this is the name, and it's still a place where you can be isolated from the street or from all the problems which exist outside when you come into the museum. We have some beautiful pieces there, and one of the main attractions of the museum is addition to the paintings in the Pico clock, wonderful mechanical clock of James Cox, British made and brought to St. Petersburg and given as a gift to Catherine by uh, her friend, lover, and general Potemkin. Hermitage is a royal residence. It has a lot of history. It's history of Russia and political history of Russia, and also a great collection of art. Collection of art collected by all the Tsars. And so we go through the museum, we'll look at the museum, at the museum of the palace, and we we'll look at the palace, and we look into some of the history. But first, we will look on some of the most important pictures which you have in Hermitage, these are pictures of Rembrandt, and so we go on. As I have told, Hermitage consists of several buildings, and now we pass from one which is called a small Hermitage to the new Hermitage, and we now are in one of the picture galleries of the museum, and we will pass through some of the masterpieces of which we are very proud and one of the greatest collections, collection of paintings by Rembrandt. And now we pass the great picture, Return of the Prodigal Son. And we go on looking, just make a glimpse of some of the great pieces, portraits done by Rembrandt. All these pictures are Rembrandt and Holy Family by Rembrandt, portraits of people of Antwerpen, crucifixion, noble portraits, Danaya, portraits of the scholar, Flora, all of very famous names, and then we pass through galleries of Dutch paintings, Dutch painting so was very much loved in Russia from time of Peter the Great, so our collection is very important. And then we go into the big room for Italian and Spanish paintings, which built, been built specially to host paintings. That's why we have these beautiful ceilings. And this part of Hermitage, this new Hermitage, which I already mentioned, is considered to be one of the greatest masterpieces of architecture, museum architecture, and still is considered as such. We go through big Italian halls, with Tiepolo and Salvata Rosa, with beautiful vases from stones, semi-precious stones brought from Ural Mountains, and now here we go through the gallery of history of paintings. And it was the entrance for Imperial Hermitage, this new Hermitage, a beautiful staircase made by Leo von Klenze, was a main entrance to the museum in the Imperial time. Nowadays, this entrance is used only for the heads of state when they visit Hermitage, and the normal visitors do come through the staircase which was used by the ambassadors visiting the Tsar. So now we go to the ambassador's staircase and we'll go through the route of ambassadors visiting the main state rooms of Russian Empire.
Well, now we go with you through the route of ambassadors. The ambassador staircase by which the ambassador have been entering into the main state rooms of Winter Palace. And we, by the way, we crossed into Winter Palace from the museum buildings. We are in official residence of Russian Emperor's Russian Tsars. This is room is called the Field Marshal's Room with the portraits of Russian Field Marshals, the main, the most important persons in the Russian military history. And also we have, together with their portraits, you know, every Field Marshal has a sticker rod, a baton, he hands in his hand, and here we have a display of uh, Marshall's uh, batons uh, from Russian history. The one which is here, the beautiful baton made for Alexander II in his capacity of field marshal, and another one belonged to Marshal Davout, uh, one of the great military commanders of Napoleon, and he lost his baton in, during the war in Russia, which is very much commemorated in the this building and the state rooms of uh, Winter Palace. Now we will cross through the main uh, rooms. We will pass through the small throne room which commemorates Peter the Great and his victories. Then we go into the room of courts of arms or crests, which has on the chandeliers uh, the symbols of all the uh, parts of all governors of Russia. It is a place where the governors have been waiting to be presented to the Tsar. Then we'll pass through the military gallery with the portraits of all the generals, of all Russian generals who fought in the war against Napoleon. And then we enter into the main throne room of Russian Empire, into the uh, St. George Hall. So we pass through two thrones, one small room and big throne room, the most symbolic places for Russian history and also great uh, examples of Russian art in architecture and interior and decoration. Well, so now we, well, as I said, we are working like ambassadors. We are entering into the small throne room with throne and the portrait of Peter the Great. And everything here commemorates these great victories of Peter. Also, certainly the Winter Palace was built by his daughter Elizabeth and uh, Peter lived in other palaces, and one of his palaces is inside of the uh, of Hermitage. And now we are in the room of the Hall of Courts of Arms. As I told you, the, you know, the chandeliers, you have these symbols of all the parts of Russian Empire. And nowadays we have here an exhibition of beautiful porcelain vases made at Imperial Porcelain Factory which is one of the prides of Russian art history. And then, and you can just imagine, the ambassadors are going to the main throne room, but everybody, ambassadors and old guests, foreigners and not foreigners, have to pass through military gallery with portrait of Alexander I and great generals and leaders of Russian army during the war with Napoleon, and after this, they entered into the St. George Hall, which has, is the main throne room, room for most important receptions. In the middle, it has the throne, and the court of arms of Russia with double-headed eagle. And over the throne place, we have the picture of St. George, who was considered to be the saint patron of Romanov family, ruling family of Russian Empire and founders of Hermitage. It was tradition in this royal family that every Tsar was buying something, adding something to a collection of Hermitage. It's a very good tradition, one of the many traditions which we try to keep alive in our museum and in our country. So now we are in the St. George Hall, as I told you, the main throne room of the Russian Empire, place for all important receptions with the throne and 
symbol coat of arms and symbols of uh, Romanov family. And uh, from here we will go into the treasury. Certainly one of the most important symbols of rule and monarchy is treasury. And in the Hermitage we have two treasuries which keep some things which are symbolic and come from the uh, Romana family and some come from different archaeological digs. Uh, we uh, will go to our treasuries. Uh, we will see the special protection which we have for these treasuries. There are two treasuries which we will visit. One is uh, golden treasury and another is the diamond treasury. The golden treasury is, has uh, houses, hosts some great archaeological collections, fantastic collection of Kitian gold, nomadic people in the steppes of the south of Russia, great collection of Greek gold found in the Greek colonies also in the south of Russia, beautiful oriental jewelry including gifts of Shah Nadir, Nadir Shah, the ruler of uh, Iran, who sent gifts which he plundered in India to Russian Empire in the time of Queen Elizabeth, the daughter of Peter who uh, built this uh, palace. Uh, great examples of the art of great uh, moguls. And another room is called the Diamond Room, and it is about uh, jewelry art and history of jewelry art in Europe, with some beautiful uh, pieces of church uh, equipment, some fantastic pieces of uh, military decoration with a lot of diamond, that's why it's called Diamond Room, some pieces from uh, Fabergé uh, factory and other famous jewelers of Russia. Beautiful things connected with the history of uh, Russia and history of Russian decorative art. We will show you well, beautiful saddles with diamonds and many other beautiful things. Well, now we enter into the golden treasury room. It begins with the Chinese and Mongolian jewelry, and we pass through the part of Central Asia, with just to the right is the famous gift of Nadir Shah, beautiful examples of Mughal jewelry, Iranian jewelry and arms, and then we pass through the collection of Greek gold from the tombs of southern Russia where have been Greek colonies. Some wonderful, very important, very famous pieces of Greek art and also of the art made for the nomadic people who lived in the steppes in the south of Russia. I mean the Scythians. So we have here to the right some famous examples, famous pieces from the tombs of Askitian rulers, and then we pass through the Siberian collection of Peter the Great, another great collection of ancient jewelry, some beautiful and famous golden pieces to the left and to the right. Now we are in the diamond treasury. We pass through some ancient gold and silver like we have seen before. And then there are some treasures from the church art, Christian art of Europe and Russia with some beautiful reliquariums. And here is, we see some of the things which give the name for the treasury, diamond decoration of arms and armor and horse saddles. Beautiful gifts, all these are things and gifts to the royal family. Now we see some of the beautiful golden pieces, collection of snuff boxes which have been very popular in 
rush of the 18th century of time of the Catherine. Here we have the decoration of the highest order of Russian Empire, Order of St. Andrew, and other snuff boxes and beautiful examples of jewelry of Russian jewelers, <coughs> like Fabergé, Apchinnikov, and others. So these are two treasury rooms with some beautiful examples. Here you can see a snuff box with a with pictures, picture of portrait of Catherine the Great in the image of Minerva, the goddess Essen. And again, snuff boxes with diamonds, diamonds, diamond room. Good, now we cross the palace square into another building. We were 10 buildings, it's a lot. Uh, this building is called the East Wing of the General Staff Building. General Staff Building was a special building for different ministries, certainly Minister of Defense, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and others. And part of it was given to Hermitage. We restored it while we built this big staircase. We adapted it to the museum needs and now it houses the uh, art of 19th and 20th century temporary art, modern art, and Red Gallery of, to, in name of Sergei Shukin and Brother Morozov's famous Russian collectors who collected fantastic uh, amount of uh, beautiful pictures we have. Well, now we will go and see the best Matisses in the world, some of the best Picassos in the world, wonderful Impressionists, and so on. And other things which we have here, which we will not see now, we are a different Museum of Royal Guards, special display of gifts, diplomatic gifts to the royal family, special display of uh, Libre d'Artiste with uh, wonderful modern graphics and so on and so on. But anyway, what is also important, another staircase. We have seen some beautiful monumental staircases of Hermitage. Hermitage is famous. And this is a new staircase built in the spirit of traditional staircases of Hermitage with a big door. Big doors, it's also part of our, let us say, brand of Hermitage in its architectural sense. So here we pass through a great encyclopedia of modern art, to say, room of Picasso, another room of Picasso, room of Deren, ceramics of Picasso, famous analytic cubistic paintings from some of the most famous and monumental of Picasso paintings, like these three ladies, and, well, another room of Picasso, the synthetic cubism, the good lighting, natural light. And here we go into the department of Matisse. Hermitage is hosting some of the best paintings by Henri Matisse. So now we come to the great red room, one of the most famous, and then to the most famous pictures bought by Sergei Shukin directly from Matisse. 
the conversation, family, portrait, music, finally the dance. Every painting is most, some of the most famous paintings in the world. And then the oriental paintings of Matisse, his paintings done in Morocco, and another masterpiece of masterpieces, Arabian Cafe, as a part of his Moroccan series. So here we have some more contemporary, French contemporary, Al Bernard Buffet, and others, Pierre Soulage. So this part of Hermitage is dedicated to what we call modern art, modern art which became traditional, and modern art contemporary art, which is still very contemporary, the famous composition number six by Kandinsky. It's not old, but I think it's enough. Now at the end of our short trip around our beautiful rooms, uh, we came to a room with a new display uh, connected with policy of inclusion, which is one of the main uh, things in today's museum mission. Exclusion, inclusion, inclusion for the people who don't see, who don't hear well, and also with connection with things which everybody doesn't see well, because everybody wants to see frescoes which are found in the archaeological excavations. Everybody wants to touch things. So here is a project which we presented together with the Carpet Museum in Baku, connected with the oldest carpet in the world. It's called Pazari Carpet, which is in Hermitage and special display, 4th century BC. Beautiful masterpiece, rare thing. And what has been done, have been done copies of pieces of this carpet have been done in a way so that you can touch it. So you can touch the picture so that you can understand what is the picture and how it looks the picture and the design on the original carpet. It is good for everybody, for those who don't see and for those who see but want to touch. So it's one of the objects of the museum we want to show and explain and to make people know things which they don't know because of this or because of that. So this is Hermitage, Hermitage which opens doors. Well, doors are very big, we open them to everybody and we are waiting for all people who love art, who are interested in world art and interested in Russian way of showing world art and world history to come to Hermitage to the wonderful and hospitable city of St. Petersburg and to our great museum, State Heritage Museum.